What's up guys, my name is Mr. Krasagi and today I'm going to be teaching you everything you need to know about AP Physics 1, Unit 1, Kinematics. So if you haven't already, please get the free AP Physics 1 book, it's linked in the description right now. It has every single thing you need to know to get a 5 and an inner class. So what are you waiting for? Get it right now. And now, let's immediately begin with Kinematics. So basically, our fundamentals, a scalar versus a vector quantity. Well, a scalar quantity... Right? That has no direction, but it only has a magnitude, while vector has both uh, a direction and a magnitude. And examples of scalar quantities include speed and distance. And vectors, those quantities include like velocity and displacement. Now in this picture on the left, right, you should basically be able to see one orange path and one blue path. And now I'm going to highlight you a key difference in distance and displacement. Well, the blue path represents the displacement because the displacement is the change in position. Displacement does not account for the intermediate steps taken. It just tells you simply the change in the position, regardless of what you do in between. While a distance, a distance accounts for everything you can do in between. You have to add up like the, um, the amount you travel for each specific part. It's not just uh, the difference in position. While displacement is just the difference in position, right? The, how much you change, how much does your position change? That's what displacement is. Well, there's three fundamental concepts of kinematics. First one is displacement, which is the change in position of an object. The next one is velocity, and velocity is like is a speed in the given direction, and acceleration is basically like velocity over time or the rate at which velocity is changing. Well, let's learn about some basics of velocity. Well, if the acceleration is zero, then velocity is displacement over time. And basically, T stands for time. That's how you present it. D or delta, right, which is the change of x, that represents displacement. And then for velocity, you have to be very specific because in a problem, you might have multiple different velocities. For example, final velocity or initial velocity. So that's why you need to use subscripts. For example, a subscript of f will mean that it's a final velocity, while a subscript of i will tell you that it's initial velocity. So be very specific in problems if you want to maximize your chance of getting a 5 and an A in your class. Well, acceleration is the rate at which velocity of an object changes, and it's denoted by a. And the average acceleration is simply the change in velocity over time. Now, average versus instantaneous rates. Well, average velocity is simply the displacement, right, divided by time, while instantaneous velocity is velocity at a specific, a very specific instant of time. And this same relation applies to average acceleration versus instantaneous acceleration. For example, average acceleration is simply delta v over t, while instantaneous acceleration is the acceleration at a very specific point in time. Well, now it's time for the most important part of this unit, the kinematics equations. These four equations are true at constant acceleration. The first one is final velocity equals initial velocity plus acceleration times time. Second one is delta x, which is the displacement equals to initial velocity plus final velocity over two, which is the same thing as the average velocity times time. And then the third one is displacement equals to initial velocity times time plus one half at squared. And then the fourth one is Final velocity squared equals initial velocity squared plus 2 times acceleration times displacement. And basically, there's 5 variables that are used throughout all 4 of these equations. And if you know at least 3 of them, then you can solve for the rest using these equations. Now let's look at a sample free response question from the 1989 exam. Well, please pause the video and try this problem on your own. It's a very important problem. And then continue the video after. Well, by now, I hope that you truly pause the video and solve the problem. So let's begin. Well, part A wants us to find the constant acceleration during the first two seconds. So if you read the problem carefully, it says that there is a sprinter, right? It starts at rest, which means the initial velocity is zero. And then with constant acceleration, it covers 10 meters in two seconds. So let's think about the variables we have. We know the displacement, it's 10 meters. We know the time, two seconds. And we know initial velocity is zero. And we want to find acceleration. So we use this equation that you see on the screen. Displacement equals initial velocity times time plus one half at squared. And now if you plug in our variables, we get, we can solve for acceleration and we can find that acceleration is five meters per second squared. Now part B says, what is the velocity after the first two seconds? Well, we know the initial velocity, we know acceleration, and we know time. So we use v final, which is final velocity, equals initial velocity plus acceleration times time. We plug in zero for initial velocity, 
We plug in 5 for acceleration and 2 for time. And we get that the final velocity is 10 meters per second. Now part C wants us to find the total time for the full 100 meters. Well, we know that for the first 10 meters, the sprinter takes 2 seconds. Now we need to find the time that the sprinter takes for the remaining 90 meters. Well, the problem says that the sprinter, right, after the first 10 meters, it moves with constant velocity after. So that means we need to find the velocity. What is this common vo constant velocity? Well, whatever the velocity the sprinter has after accelerating, which means after the first two seconds, that same velocity, the sprinter will continue moving at that exact same velocity. And we already know that that velocity is 10. And it covers 90 meters with that velocity. So we use the equation time equals to displacement over velocity. And we can find that the remaining 90 meters is covered in 9 seconds. So that means we add 2 to 9 seconds because 2 seconds for the first 10 meters and 9 seconds for the remaining 90 meters and we get 11 seconds. Now part D. Part D wants us to draw a position versus time graph. Well, for the first 2 seconds, the sprinter accelerates. So the position versus time graph will be a parabola for the first 2 seconds. But after the first 2 seconds, the velocity is constant. So then it becomes a linear line. It just increases linearly. Now, let's move on to 2D kinematics. Well, 2D kinematics is basically two 1D kinematics problems. So you're basically solving two problems at once. So one important tip is to solve for the x direction and y direction separately. Please work separately with motion in the x direction and the y direction because the motion in the x direction is independent to the motion in the y direction. For example, if there's acceleration in the x direction, I mean in the y direction, right? That won't have effect on the x direction. So please work separately with the x direction and the y direction. Well, one question. What is one variable that is the same for motion in both the x direction and y direction in 2D kinematics? Well, time is that one variable. So that's why finding time can be extremely useful because that gives you information about both motion in the x direction and the y direction. Well, key facts about projectile motion. At the top of the projectile motion, the vertical velocity is zero. And then the horizontal velocity, on the other hand, remains constant for the entire motion. It's always the same. There is no acceleration in the x direction. And basically, a final walkthrough for 2D kinematics. If an object, right, v, if it's thrown with an initial velocity of v0 at an angle theta with respect to the ground, then the horizontal velocity will be v0 cosine theta and the initial vertical velocity will be v0 sine theta. Since there is no acceleration in the x direction, that means a of x equals to zero. And please write out all the variables in an orderly manner like you can see on the screen. I wrote it all in an orderly manner and now if I want to solve a problem, it's going to be much simpler for me because the chances of me making an error is going to be lower because I have it all out cleanly written out. Now let's look at a simple application of projectile motion. So basically in this diagram that you see there is a soccer ball that will be kicked off the table horizontally and then we're given that this ball will land 12 meters from the table and the time it takes for its motion for it to hit the ground is 3 seconds. So using that, find the velocity at which the ball leaves the table. Well, we know that in projectile motion, right, there is no acceleration in the horizontal direction and this means that the horizontal displacement equals to horizontal velocity times time. So I already said that the horizontal displacement is 12 and then the time is 3. So we can use that and divide both sides by 3 to get that the velocity is 4 meters per second. Now, what is the height of the table? Well, since the ball is kicked horizontally, right, from the table, it means that the initial vertical velocity is 0. And we also know that the time that it takes for the motion is 3 seconds and then the acceleration is g. So we can use this equation to find the height of the table. So we substitute our variables in to get h equals to 0, which is the initial velocity, plus 1 half g t squared. And t squared is 3 squared since the time is 3. And we can simplify this to get h equals to 9g over 2. And we use g equals to 10 as an approximation to get that the height is around 45 meters. Now thank you so much for watching this video. And please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe since that's going to tell me that you guys are truly enjoying and learning from the books and the videos that I've been making for you guys. And don't forget to join the Discord server to meet other hardworking students that are preparing for various competitions and exams such as the AP exams. And also, 
don't forget to follow the Instagram if you have Instagram to uh, view educational reels and cool animations. And again, thank you so much for watching this video and I really hope to see you soon back again on this channel.